Hey Pit Masters, what's up? Time to clarify some things about our oil. Lately I've been cooking a lot of steak and I also cook my steaks in a cast iron pan which led to a lot of debate. Debate about my oil, debate about butter, debate about a lot of things. People telling me I'm using the wrong oil, using canola oil, using coconut oil, whatever oil. And also having a big discussion about which oils are right for you. Now let me clarify one thing first. I'm no health guru, as you might have noticed yet. I look fit, I look lean, I might not be healthy, but I'm real tight. Strong, stick 80 man, lumberjack, timber, chainsaw. What are you laughing about? I tr you try so hard, it's never enough. All right, back to the story. What I wanna talk to you guys about is about oil and which oils you should use and which oils you shouldn't use for frying your steak. Frying a steak is done at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. Some oils are not suitable to get up to 180 degrees Celsius. For instance, rapeseed oil or canola oil. This is cold pressed and when it's cold pressed, unless it's refined, but when it's cold pressed, it only goes up to 107 and then you've already reached your smoke point. Let me show you what a smoke point looks like. I got a cast iron pan and I got a hot fire. And that's how I typically fry my steaks in oil. If we put a little bit of our canola oil in that is cold pressed, we'll let this come up to temperature. You can now see that the oil is reaching its smoke point. Blue smoke is coming out of our pan and actually you can start to smell the oils burning. You get blue smoke out of the pan, it gives a bad smell. Basically, you know, you're in a wrong spot. You want to prevent this. You want to be able to fry your steak at a safe point where it doesn't start to smoke and the oil doesn't start to burn. Because in general, burned oil tastes bad and you don't want a bad tasting steak. If you want to find out which oils are bad for your steak and are going to smoke at a lower temperature than 180 degrees Celsius, go to Wikipedia. The link is down below. You find a list there with all the oils and types of oils which you shouldn't be using to fry your steak in because they have a way too low smoking point. Now before we go further, I want to address one thing about olive oil. You have extra virgin olive oil. And in most olive oil producing countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, they have only the good quality stuff. But in the rest of Europe and most of the rest of the world, they also know something known as classical or original olive oil. And this stuff is refined olive oil. I was talking to an Italian guy once on a holiday and I told him, hey, you should use this. And he said, what? I've never heard of that before. He didn't even know what classical or original olive oil was. And the funny thing is, last video, I got a comment just like that. Somebody saying, hey, I work in the oil industry. I'm from Spain. I never heard of that before. I think you're wrong. I want to address it. Here it is, proven. It actually exists. And it's what the olive oil producing countries ship to other countries. It's an extracted oil from the olive that is chemically produced to make the olive oil, well, have a higher smoke point. And if we check the list from Wikipedia, what it says about olive oil refined, the smoke point is 243 degrees Celsius, which is 470 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have an extra virgin olive oil, uh, it goes up to 210 degrees Celsius, which means you can fry your steak in extra virgin olive oil. That is a good thing because this is healthy for you and it's a good quality. And actually it's a really stable, stable oil. And even though I don't know much about health and oils and that, that, especially that combination, I know this is good stuff. What is more important to me than all of the knowledge about health and smoke point is what does it actually taste like? If I'm cooking my steak, if I'm frying my steak, what does my steak taste like in the end? And that to me is the most important part. I want to separate our oils into three parts. We got our refined oils. We've got our cold press oils. And we got our animal fats. This is beef tallow. And we got butter. And in this case, clarified butter. Refined oils 
cold pressed oils, animal fat. What I want to establish here is our refined oils. How much of the flavor of the refined oil will catch on to our steak? Now we know that from our cold pressed canola oil, we have a smoke point that is lower than our frying point. So it will taste like burned oil. So this is not gonna work. Now here I have our coconut oil. It's also cold pressed and let's check the smoke temperature on that. Coconut oil, unrefined, dry, expelled, pressed, virgin. Smoking point 177 degrees Celsius. That is too low. We need 180. Even though it's three degrees off, the chances are you might go a little above and you might burn it anyway. So it's gonna have a negative effect on your steak. Now our extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin, low acidity, high quality, 207 degrees Celsius, which is a 27 degrees above our, our frying point. So we can actually use our extra virgin olive oil. We can't use these. Now let's check our butter. Butter, it says 150 degrees Celsius. So this thing here starts to smoke below 180 degrees Celsius. So it's not suitable. Don't use butter. But then there is this clarified butter or also known as ghee. And clarified butter goes up to 250 degrees Celsius. So you can actually use butter as long as you clarify it. Now, beef tallow, this beautiful stuff, actually goes up to a frying point of 190 degrees Celsius. So that's just 10 degrees Celsius over our 180 D that we actually need. So it can work, but barely. So now we've established that we can use our refined oils, our extra virgin olive oil, as long as it's high quality, our beef tallow and our clarified butter. Now we need to find out, can we taste it and what makes our steak taste best? For me, the normal combination that I use is butter and refined olive oil. So I already know what it tastes like. Now there are three combinations left and we're going to start with beef tallow. I'm going to put some of it in a cast iron skillet and let it come up to temperature. Luckily I have some leftover steaks laying around. Well, I understand that doesn't happen to most of you guys, but we got a nice ribeye here, another one, a strip loin, another strip loin, and this is our 60 day dry aged ribeye. Yeah, just happen to have these laying around, you know. Well, forget about that. We're just gonna use these for our steak experiment. We're going to ignore the flavor of the strip loin and the ribeye. We're just going to test it in comparison to the oil that we're adding in the pan. Our beef tallow has reached a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. That's our frying temperature. Now in goes our strip loin. Our steak is done. It's time to take it off the grill. We'll let it rest for five minutes and then we'll give it a taste test. In the meantime, I'm going to take the beef tallow out of the pan, clean it up, and we're going to move on to our extra virgin olive oil. We'll sprinkle on a little bit of salt and we'll slice into our steak. Now let's give this a quick try. Tastes like steak. Huh. Between the beef and the fat, it's really hard to distinguish the difference. I cannot taste the beef tallow. It doesn't add flavor, it doesn't extract any flavor. This thing tastes like a steak. Time to move on to our next steak. Clean pan, let's put some olive oil in it. Extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. Let's put this on the fire and get it up to 180 degrees Celsius. Oh, it's so cold, I'm so glad we got this hot fire. Yes, we're at 180 degrees Celsius. Time to put our steak in. When I placed the steak in the extra virgin olive oil cold press, I immediately noticed a hint of what I remember as frying fish. But basically what that is, is the omega-3 that you smell. So it's not actually like frying fish. Oh. <laughs> That's why frying in a barbecue is always so much fun. You get all these nice flames. Be careful though, it's dangerous. Our steak is done. We got a beautiful crust on the outside. It's time to put it on the cutting board and let it rest. Sprinkle on a little bit of salt and slice into it. This is a good looking steak. <laughs> there we go, olive oil steak. 
there is a tiny, 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 tiny hint of olive oil in the flavor, but it's very tiny. It's almost unnoticeable. It's like, you don't even know it's there. I know it's there because I know, and because, because I know I'm looking for it, that I know it's there. But if you wouldn't know, then you wouldn't know. So basically, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. It's a good steak. That's what it is. Don't worry about it. I think you have seen too much of uh, the Irish man. Yeah, yeah, it's not good for you. Take the evening off, start on time, watch the whole thing. You'll talk like me. Well, what do you think? It's a good steak. That's what I said, it's a good steak. You can taste it, it's there, but you don't know. Now you know. On to the next one. Our refined oil. Let's put it in the pan, heat it up, and fry a steak. We got our oil up to 180 degrees Celsius. Time to put our ribeye steak in. All right, time to flip the steak around. Our refined oil steak is done. Time to take it off the grill, put it on the board, and let it rest. Let's sprinkle on a little bit of salt and let's slice into it. All right, let's give it a try. Mm. I love ribeye. You know what? This one is the only one that tastes a little bit different. And at first, at first I thought it's the ribeye flavor because it has more beef, uh, has more beef flavor in the ribeye. But that's not what I'm tasting. The refined oils shouldn't have any flavor. It should be the lowest in flavor of all of them. So if you couldn't taste one, this should be the one. You know what? I'm just gonna call it. There's no flavor. I can't taste it. It's not there. Morrison, please verify for me. Please give it a try. Can you taste the oil? There's nothing there. Well, the only thing that I tasted is a really, really crunchy steak. A really nice and crunchy steak. It's a good frying oil. But no taste. No taste, no flavor. Out of all of these steaks, this one tasted the best because, because it was the ribeye. Out of all of these oils that we tested on steaks, you don't taste any flavor of the oil. So that means if you have a flavor of the oil, either you burned it and the flavor became too extreme or you have too much oil still on your steak afterwards. So now you know that there's only one bad oil for your steak and that's the one with the low smoke point, the one that's going to burn while you are frying your steak. So don't use that one. Check it out, the link is down below. Find out which smoke point your oil has, which one you like to use and then give it a try. Find out. Go do it. What are you waiting for? You gotta thank the patrons. Thank you. Leave us a big thumbs up, comment down below. Hope you guys are watching next time as well as this time. Uh, hope you guys are not as cold as we are. Uh, well, see you guys next time. Until then, it's makkelijk. And keep on grilling. Dag Morrison. Oh, it's so cold. You eat it, I'm going home. <laughs>